Hello and welcome to Nottingham for the men's health survival of the fittest powered by Land Rover. We've already seen the capital of Wales transformed into an assault course fit for any army and now this lot are ready for more. Go! Go! It won't have escaped your attention that we're in the city of a well-known tights-wearing outlaw. So let's get the Robin Hood cliches out of the way now. Enough of that because we don't need any extra heroes here. We have over 4,000 warriors who are ready to dash, dive, crawl and climb their way over 10 obstacles over 10 kilometers. And the final one is this, the Wall of Fame. So let's forget about Sherwood and go to your commentator in the box for more information, Rob Walker. Thanks, Nigel. More than 3,500 willing competitors getting ready for this survival of the fittest here in Nottingham, the spiritual home of this event, now in its third year and going from strength to strength. Don't worry, none of the uh, runners will have to do that, although it's a pretty impressive sight. Cold and fresh here on the banks of the River Trent. And remember, if you've been watching these events before, it's 10K and 10 obstacles. We've got all sorts, including the Army Assault Course, the Stadium Stair Climb, and two water crossings this year. So it's going to be a very, very icy uh, finish for some of these competitors. Their Stair Climb will take them into Nottingham Forest's city ground. And then, of course, it's the Wall of Fame before the finish. The fastest runner to get around the course over the eight foot wall and across the finish line will be the winner. We have a lot of men in tights that are hoping to be Nottingham's latest legend, but there can be only one. Well, this is the man who fancies making it two out of two, Bruce Rayside, who if you were watching last week, you'll have seen him sweep all before him in Cardiff. He really had a tremendous day. It was the grimace that turned into a smile. Can he do it again? Bruce, amazing run last week to take uh, Cardiff. What have you got planned for us today here in Nottingham? Um, well, I'm a local lad, so I know exactly where I'm going. Hopefully, I might actually win by a couple of minutes instead of about 10 seconds, as I did last week. Well, I did actually have a two-minute lead last week, but I threw it away. So, you know, maybe two, three, four minutes, you never know. Well, that's big confident talk by Bruce Rayside, and this is the man who tried to close him down in Wales, Mike Callenberg, a superb silver seven days ago. He wants to go one better here in Nottingham. Are you looking to uh, maybe try and catch Bruce this time? He's the only man who beat you. Yeah, I'll try and go with him from the start this time. See how long I can stay with him for. Just give it a shot, see what happens. And I'm sure that your training partner, uh, Andrew, is going to be hot on your heels. Is that a bit of a worry? I've got to watch my back. I've got to be careful, yeah. So it'll be good, though. It'll be a good race. I'm looking forward to it. Well, he's talking about Andrew Friend, who was the Cardiff champion in 2009 and came fourth last week in the attempt of his defence. Three and a half thousand competitors here on the start line. Rayside looks confident. Here they go. A massive field and their first obstacle, as it always is in these survival of the fittest events, is the hay bale scramble. And look at the different techniques being employed there. This is an event that attracts all sorts of shapes and sizes and skills. There's some rugby players out there, football players, cricketers. Oh, and a comedian. Right, we'll have to find out who this guy is. I'm not sure he's expecting to stay at the front for very long, judging by that I'm winning uh, line. There's Bruce Rayside on the uh, right-hand side of your picture there. Now, when the camera pans round, there you can see our leader. 1658, right, his name is Adam Healy. I love the fact that there's a big smile there. Let's have a look at what this guy's all about. Apparently, he's studying to become a vet at Nottingham University. Well, I'll wager he's won more than a couple of pints by saying, guess what, guys, at some stage, I will be in the lead of the Nottingham survival of the fittest, <laughs> but I almost certainly won't stay there. That's a nice look over his shoulder. A few words exchanged with Bruce Rayside, and I don't think he'll be uh, living with this pace for very long. 
first and second a week ago first and second here in Nottingham in these very very early stages Rayside but Kallenberg is right behind him tucked in and these two already have a sizable lead over the chasing pack there you can see them in the distance Healy's going backwards fast and I'm not sure we're going to see much more of him he's had his moment of glory so too did Rayside seven days ago and he wants another one here I just sense an injection of pace there you get a better perspective when they're side on as they head down towards the riverbank Rayside has definitely turned it on a little bit here he was aware that Mike Kallenberg was behind him and thought okay enough's enough I'm off so here we come up to the parkour zone this is the free running obstacle invented by the French and he tends to go quite well over these he did well in Cardiff over this obstacle oh, I like the scissor jump there getting egged on by the marshals it really is a tiring way to run going over these particular obstacles European distance runners tend to train very steadily and it's all about getting a rhythm and holding that rhythm well of course with this kind of event your rhythm is constantly broken now here's a first glimpse of an interesting duo we've got Daniel Schwartz with the dreadlocks in a ponytail in the center of your picture he's running with an injury finished 14th last week in Cardiff and just behind him Andrew Friend who arrived in Wales as the defending champion and ended up fading quite badly to fourth place. He'll be hoping for better today. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go out as hard as I did in Cardiff. Um, it sort of highlighted to me the last weekend uh, how unfit I am compared to last year. So I'm going to go off a little bit steady this time, take my time over the obstacles, hopefully no falls this time, um, and pick it up towards the end of the race instead of have people coming through me and have to pick it up on the wall at the end. It was a great effort by Schwartz seven days ago, but the injury just caused him too many problems. Yeah, ended up with a fractured toe. Thought it was initially broken, but went to hospital, turned out it was just fractured. Uh, and unfortunately, it was on the obstacle that I was dreading before the race. So hopefully, I did this course last year, so hopefully there won't be any surprises. OK, now uh, it's only been a week since you fractured a toe. What was the advice you probably to not run, but you're here? Yeah, uh, not to run, but you know, uh, the, fit, the fit get fit quicker than the non-fit, so it's survival of the fittest, so I rested it, iced it up quite a few times, uh, went for a run and did some jumps on it and it seemed all right, so as the fittest would do, ignore the doctor's advice and come have some fun. Schwartz has the tactics of a hard man. There's Mike Kallenberg in second place. Schwartz and friend in third and fourth working their way back to the man in silver medal position and the fact that they can see him will help to draw him in as he heads into the parkour obstacle that we've already seen the leader Bruce Rayside waltz through and I wonder whether Kallenberg knows that they're coming it really does make a big difference sometimes when you're part of a pair you can work off each other and the man isolated just up ahead by somewhat 10 or 20 meters takes a tumble and as he does so I'm in no doubt he knows that Schwartz and friend are there certainly does now because Schwartz using his arms as well as that uh, fractured toe and he now moves into second place well this is going to make things very interesting indeed as they go past the uh, 2k mark Kallenberg's recovered from that little tumble and is now re-seizing the initiative here. But if these three can work together, we'll have a very, very interesting contest for silver and bronze. Remember Andrew Friend faded badly last week and he said so, didn't he, in the interview before this race. So it's a different tactic we'll see from him today. Slow and steady and he'll just work his way through the midway stages and try to make sure he's still got something left for the last two obstacles. Meanwhile, wave after wave begin this Nottingham course. Three and a half thousand people on 14 separate starts. And probably more than 14 different costumes. Great effort by all these competitors, especially the Royal Marines. Now, have you set yourself uh, any extra challenges along the run? 
Yeah, um, we're actually doing it with um, traditional sort of Royal Marines fighting order weight of 21 pounds in, in a belt order. Uh, we're doing this today, we thought it'd be had an extra little measure because we're doing it for a Royal Marines charity, it's a very important cause. So you thought 10k is not enough, 10 obstacles is not enough, let's have 21 pounds as well. Are these, are these the weights right here? They are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there, if you want to, uh, if you want to go for a run with that on, if you fancy it. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a lunatic, mate. Not that heavy. Well, maybe so, yeah. yeah. We'll see at the end. Well, I think Nigel needs to be a bit careful who he's calling a lunatic. The Marines out on the course. And one or two other competitors just getting a helping hand in a sensitive place to get across the obstacles. Come on. Well, it's an interesting tactic. There's nothing for the legs to draw on. It's all in the arms, this one. Come on, come on. Oh, no. Well, we'll have to make sure the referee doesn't see that. I'm sure he won't be disqualified. No, it's fine. Thank you. Come on, Jacqueline. Come on, keep going. It's a lot harder than it looks. But with a little bit of assistance and a smile, everyone will make it to the finish line. Meanwhile, Bruce Rayside tasted victory in Wales seven days ago. And he wants it again here. Personal best on 10K of just outside 30 minutes. Narrowly missed out on selection for the Commonwealth Games this year. And I think that's why his victory was so sweet last week but after that dunking he is going to be absolutely freezing now we didn't see this in the previous edition of survival of the fittest he's got a life jacket on so what awaits him at the top of the hill ah oh, superb well that's got to be good fun the thighs will take a break I'm sure it'll be a bit of a shock when he gets into the water. And there comes Andrew Friend. And that's significant because for the first time in this race, we see him ahead of his training partner, Mike Kallenberg. So that's second, third and fourth, but it's all about number one for Bruce Rayside. Join us after the break to find out if he can stay there. Welcome back to the Men's Health Survival of the Fittest. We're here at the Nottingham stage of this race tour, which also takes in Cardiff and Edinburgh. There are rumoured to be three women to every man in this town, which is probably why it's the most successful race in the series. But we need to find out how our merry men are getting along. Rob, you're the man with the details. Thanks, Nigel. Well, it's been a great day so far. Three and a half thousand competitors out on the course, and the man in the lead is Bruce Rayside. A useful middle distance runner, useful steeple chaser, and pretty handy over 10k as well, wet or dry. And he's being hotly pursued by Mike Kallenberg, who went over in second place. Then came Daniel Schwartz, remember the guy competing with a fractured toe. And Andrew Friend, Cardiff's champion from 2009, is in there as well. But at the moment, it's all about Brucey. He has got a good technique uh, with those barriers. Now he's coming up to a very interesting obstacle. A 10 foot greased sloped platform. Now how will he tackle this one? It's got potential for a bit of slapstick, this obstacle. Pretty steady at the moment. There you can see a couple of slips. Nearly there. And I just wonder, he's through that fairly smoothly. I just wonder whether he's getting a little bit tired. Maybe doesn't look quite as comfortable as he did en route to his victory in Wales a week ago. Now the rope web, very smoothly through that one. But he has gone off quite hard. And there's Kallenberg in second place, having a problem with the greased slope. And we just saw Andrew Friend going through ahead of him. Now, these two guys are training partners. And I know Mike was delighted to beat Andrew in Cardiff. But now he's got a battle on his hands and he's breathing pretty hard. 
Friend has already successfully completed the rope web, so he's taken quite a bit of time out of his training buddy in the last minute or so. So it will be a very, very interesting battle for second and third. And maybe if Andrew Friend has done what he claimed he would do before the race and saved something for the finish, well, maybe he can see Rayside and he might fancy his chances of closing him down. Certainly it will have hurt him last week when he saw this man take his prized title in Cardiff. And I think Rayside is getting a little bit tired. It's not surprising. He is a man with the pedigree when it comes to his flat speed. But maybe today's obstacles are just interrupting his rhythm a little bit too much. Well, for these guys, it's all about just getting by and having a bit of fun. Great shot, that. Good work by the cameraman. And I wonder what Brian Clough would have made of this. He might have made them go around three or four times, actually. Pretty hard taskmaster. Well, that's one way of going downhill. Easy to make the odd slip up here. But it's an event with a superb spirit, this one. Now in its third year, and it's beginning to attract all sorts of competitors for all sorts of reasons. Now, the Royal Marines, you would think, would be the experts when it comes to obstacle courses. How's he going to handle the rope web? Too easy for the professional. And from one extreme to the other. <laughs> That's a great effort by the Santas, getting in the festive spirit. I don't think they'll be wearing those for a couple of pints later. They look a little bit dirty. Meanwhile, back with the leaders, and we're looking at Andrew Friend, who's in second place. There you can see Bruce Rayside just in the background there, and he's completed his one dunk. That's what you've got to do after going under the bench. But the important thing here for Andrew Friend is that he will be aware that he's catching the man in first place, and that first-time basket will help. They're now heading on towards the wrecked car scramble. And we said that Rayside was tiring a little bit, and he definitely is, because you can just start to see Andrew Friend in the background. So, the man aiming for a double victory, just ahead of Andrew Friend, is going to have to put on the afterburners, because this guy is timing his drive to perfection. There's the anxious glance from Bruce Rayside, as we see Kallenberg a tired third place, but he's got a lot of distance between himself and the rest of the field, so his place on the podium should be assured as long as he can keep things going. Well, maybe a little bit too tired, just forgot he's actually got to go through the tyre. Marshall's quite rightly saying, come on, you've got to play this game properly. Now the Land Rover obstacle. And Rayside is closing in now. He's somehow... Managed to hit cruise control, and now he's flying. There you can see the haystack that begins the challenge, so he is right back towards the finishing chute with one obstacle left, and that's the wall of fame. Now, this didn't cause him too many problems a week ago, but he is definitely more tired than he was in Wales, so let's see how he approaches the eight-foot wall. Well, there's plenty of British grit in there, isn't there? Deja vu for Rayside. He is the champion once again. And I wonder whether this victory is slightly sweeter than his win seven days ago, because I think he went through some bad patches there. Big crowd here in Nottingham, as Andrew Friend approaches the climb so tall he doesn't even use the rope much better performance by the 2009 cardiff champion fourth a week ago this time it's second he told us he was going to pace it a bit better and he's done so nice forward roll over the finish line as well big smile big performance and silver 
last week. This time it's bronze, but he's on the podium once again. <laughs> what about Daniel Schwartz? He wins the show-off award. Fractured toe. That doesn't stop the uh, press-ups or the acrobatic landing. What a character. Meanwhile, they plod on and over and across. And I'm not sure what you call that. Not quite the same tactic as the Royal Marines, but he's through. You have to tackle everything to get round this Nottingham course. Dirt, mud, ice, and a lot of fun. Come on in, the water's lovely. <laughs> so, Bruce, first across the line again, how was the race for you? Awesome, um, even more exciting than it was last week. Um, I suppose there's more people, uh, more crowds, um, and not only that, it's on my home turf. So I really enjoyed running around here, you know? <laughs> Toughest obstacle today? Um, to be honest with you, the wall is always the toughest. Um, you just never know whether you're going to get over it or not. I had to sort of brace myself, take a deep breath, and I got over it in the end. But also, the, the very first thing, the, uh, hail, the, the uh, bales of hay, I mean, getting over that just really takes you know, the, the lactic out of you, and uh, you just can't breathe. To, that's probably the toughest part to get going, really. Well, a superb silver for Andrew Friend, beating his training partner, Mike Callenberg, and almost catching Rayside. Second today. Much better than last week. How was it? It was, I don't know, it was like the perfect race. It was like everything went right. I decided at the start that I was going to set out nice and easy. I sat out nice and easy, sat behind a couple of people, saved my energy. It was nice and safe through the uh, obstacles. And then when Mikey made a mistake, I put the hammer down and lost him. Well, it's a brutal day for some. There's the first woman to finish, the leading lady, Claire Watson. Big smile from her. And some are taking a tumble here at this last obstacle. It really does require just a little bit of grit. <laughs> and some of those guys starting are just waving to those finishing. Superb effort by the Royal Marines, as you would have expected. There's even room for romance and banana man here in Nottingham. It's got something for everyone, this event. So, first lady across the line, how's it feel? Oh, pretty tired. Feels good. How was the race? Feels good. It was really tiring. Like, there's a a lot of um, open running, uh, the obstacles are really tough. But it was really enjoyable, yeah, I had a great time. Uh, what was your favourite obstacle? Um, favourite obstacle is the mud. You have to literally go through like an army assault course covered in mud from head to toe and then swim through a river. It was wicked fun. You love survival of the pits, don't you? It's great fun, it is well worth it. If you've not tried it, go and try it. Just to tick a box to see you've done it, it's fabulous fun. That's it from the survival of the fittest here in Nottingham for another year. They came, they saw, they conquered that wall. Until next time, it's goodbye.